So our next speaker is Saravanan, and he'll be talking about graph term. Hi. A um, couple of talks. People said no demos, so I'm going to break that rule again. And we, we, uh, if you noticed in my talk, I had collaboration in the title. So we're going to do a collaborative demo, and it may fail. Obviously, I have a backup boring PowerPoint talk, which I'll revert back to. But the way to get started is you can join in in this talk by typing the URL. And if the screen was better, you could capture this with your iPad on your scanner. You, you can, um, if you're using Windows, use Chrome or IE 10 or Firefox. That, you need that to uh, access this website. So this is actually a website that's running on Amazon Cloud. And you'll actually be able to, at some point, I'll give you access to this computer so you can mess around with it, but it's not my laptop. I wouldn't do this on my laptop. OK. Um, the number five, that means five people are joined in. The URL is also here in case you don't see it, and you can do it anytime. So if. if yeah. Yeah, just put any username. It, it just, it's just for uh, information. The other thing is, you see a small button at the bottom right called feedback. So anytime during the talk, you can actually click on that, type any text, and it'll appear on the screen. So anytime you can um, give me feedback, and you can see it appears on the right. So you can give me feedback. And actually, I developed the software because I teach, and I've been teaching programming. And last spring, we switched to teaching Python. And I used the IPython notebook for the first time, and I really liked it. But one thing I didn't like was going back and forth between the terminal and the IPython notebook. And I thought, how far can you push the notebook interface where you still stay in the terminal, but still use all the features of the notebook? Not all the features, you can't do that, but many of the features of the notebook. So let's get started. So I'm going to run a few slides first. So I'm running a terminal here, and if you're logged in, you should be able to see oh, I, you should be able to see what I'm typing in. So I'm going to look at a few slides first. So this is a command that displays slides. OK, so it's a notebook-like graphical terminal interface for collaboration and inline data visualization. I work at Texas a and It's about two hours from here. I don't know if there are any Aggies in the audience. Howdy. You see Davis Aggie. Well, not enough Aggies in the audience. In, in, in Texas a and it will produce a loud response back. OK. Um, and you can reach me. I mean, you can Google for graph term if you want to find out more later. It's, it, you can Google for it. So I'm running this. Uh, demo within graph term. So what you're seeing is images of my PowerPoint slides. These are actual PNG, uh, J, JPEG files. So the inspiration for this is that a GUI gives you sentences you can say to express yourself, but a command line gives you the words. So you can construct all kinds of sentences using the command line that you can't do with the GUI, although the GUI is much more friendly. And the graphical terminal is not new. The very first terminal I used, this was about 1988. Uh, some of you may remember it. It's a tectonics terminal. And if you look closely, what you'll see is this text and vector graphics. And actually, Xterm actually still has the mode. You can actually do vector graphics in the Xterm if you send the right escape sequences, although nobody does it anymore. So it's a, the goal is to have a fully backwards compatible terminal emulator for Xterm. And it actually uses code from AjaxTerm and an earlier project called Xterm. So this is my second attempt to do it. I tried it 10 years ago. It was too slow at that time. I've been using this as my primary terminal for a year, so it works for me as a terminal. And whenever I encounter a problem, I fix it, obviously. And it, it's on GitHub, and if you can just Google graph term, it'll probably get you there. And there's also a website with information. And it's about 6,000 lines of Python for the server, and about 6,000 lines of HTML and JavaScript. So it's, it's a medium-sized project. So what I'm going to do now is to exit my presentation and do some live demos. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is to show you what the terminal looks like. So normally, if you see, this is my, all the files on this Amazon Cloud instance, and you see a bunch of file names. And what I wanted was to have them clickable. So there's a command called gls, which makes them clickable. 
So I want to look at some examples now. So I click on the examples directory. And what it does is it generates a command automatically. It says cd example gls minus f. So it cds the directory and replace the directory. So it acts like a file explorer or navigator. So you can just click your way into wherever you want to go and then start typing commands. So now what I'm going to do is to click on this file called sinewave.ipynb. You can't see that because there's comments coming in. Uh, yeah, there's a question about screen size. Uh, that's an issue because it's, it's tuned to my screen size. So it's going to be a problem if your screen size is not similar. It's not going to be easy to do that. So let me click on the sinewave.ipynb file. It's blue, so it's clickable. OK, and uh, let me start with what you see on top. When you clicked on it, it generated a command. It's actually running IPython. And it loads a particular file which initializes the notebook mode. And you see the actual file name from the notebook. And actually, now we're in the notebook mode. And this is more like the QD console than the web notebook, because uh, you can also go back to the terminal mode anytime. So let me run this demo. I'm going to first clear the output. This was the output that's originally there. So I'm going to use some keyboard shortcuts to clear all the output. And I do Control Enter now. And we ran the demo, so it created a simple sign plot. So this is the notebook mode. But I control C now. Now that the output from the notebook mode is just put in like a terminal. Now I'm back to the terminal mode. Now I use the up arrow and edit my command. I'm going to make it a cosine plot. So we've got a cosine plot superimposed on a sine plot that was created in the notebook mode. And I'm going to change the title. So it changes the title as well. And you can actually change, uh, save the notebook mode uh, data as a notebook file with the .ipynb format as well. And now what I'm going to do is to exit this um, program. I'm running IPython. If you look at the prompt, you see that. It, it, and IPython doesn't know it's running in a notebook. All it knows is it's running in the terminal. So the prompts are being passed to create the notebook mode. So now I quit IPython. And I go back to the previous command line. I'm going to do the same command with standard Python interpreter. So I'm going to remove i from the ipython. And you actually get the same notebook mode. It's just passing different prompts, and you can do all the same things again. And now I'm going to do something which is maybe a little foolish. I'm going to share this terminal with anybody who's here. And I don't want all of you to do things, because you could crash it. Um, so let me get volunteers. Someone is running um, Chrome on Mac or something like that. J j raise your hand. OK, just two or three people. OK, so what I'm going to do now, I locked the terminal before I started. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is to do something called tandem mode, where multiple people can access the terminal. That's unstable, but we'll try that. So it checks with me that I want to do that, and I unlock it. OK. Now, one of you, and we can actually see all the users who are on now. So these are all the users that are accessing the terminal right now. So one of you, go ahead and click on, yeah, someone stole it, I think. Is it? Um, you can click on the steal button or put shared control, and you actually edit the notebook if you want. So anybody manage to edit the notebook cell? If all of you do it simultaneously, it's going to be chaos. But can change the sign back to cosine if you want to do that. Anybody have access? Oh, you, OK. OK. <laughs> All right. OK, we're not seeing that. OK, let me exit the notebook mode. The notebook mode is a little tricky. I'm going to control C out of this. OK, so anybody who's on now can try typing a command on the Python command line. Nope. 
Yeah, you have to steal. You have to steal or sh do shared control. This control thing has to be checked for you to be able to do that. Or you can click the steal button, and then you can do that. Any luck? No. OK, go to share and click on control, like, like that. I should probably proceed, because we only have limited time. OK. OK. So I'm going to actually block it again so that nobody inadvertently does things with it. So I'm going to come back to the share more later. So the other things you can do here are uh, the notebook modes independent of language. So I can, what I have here is uh, R notebook running ggplot. So I'm going to click on that. So this actually creates a ggplot R plot here. So this was the original thing. I'm going to run it again. It didn't find the demos. Oh, OK, I need to install it again. So, but it does actually work if it's, we need three extra plots, including Cairo and ggplot to do that. And I guess I did it earlier. It worked. Well, this is with demos. But it works with R, and I actually used it even with IDL, which is a proprietary package. But if you can pass the prompt, you can actually do the notebook mode as well. OK. Some of the other things you can do here, you can do pandas as well. And here it actually behaves like the QD console. So if I do cat pandas, so I'm going to cut and paste this into my Python interpreter. Let's go back, edit my command. And I paste it in here. So now you get the HTML output in line. So again, the graph term detects if something is HTML and then displays it within the terminal mode. So some of the examples, you can do a slideshow. So the way the slideshow works is this command generates the HTML for the slideshow, and then you can display it as an iframe. OK. So now we have a slideshow running within the graph term. But basically, it's an iframe that shows a reveal slideshow within graph term. So you can take any markdown file which has the right format and then feed it to the iframe, and then you get a slideshow. And you can actually navigate the slideshow. And then I'm going to quit the slideshow. OK, one more uh, demo now. I'm going to do, this is going to be, it's probably not useful, but it looks nice. I'm going to change the theme on the mode, on the terminal. OK. Now you can see what's coming, probably. Uh, this is actually, if, if you don't do the theme, it's just your regular less. But uh, CSS has something called a 3D perspective theme, which is Good to show others, but you don't want to work with it for a long time. But it actually works, and it's perfectly, this is all the stuff, this is your history. If you go back. <laughs> this is something I always wanted to do, that um, the crawl is actually a command line, if you think about it. And it's, it's just the less command working on that. So let me change, you can actually change the theme from the command line. I'm going to change it back. 
And one of the other things you can do is you can trace code execution. So I'm going to use this for teaching my kids, and I want to see everyone's terminal on my terminal, and then be able to debug code. So. So this is an online tool that lets you trace code. And so I can run it within the terminal because it's an iframe. So I just put in an iframe and I'm going to step forward in this code execution. And you can see that this tool tells you what each variable is doing. And students like using this because they can trace the execution of a loop. And remember, you're doing this within your terminal. So I do a control C. Actually, control C doesn't work because I'm an iframe. I click my X here and get out of this and get back to my terminal again. So you can go to any program in your file system and then run a, it only works for small programs, so you can do that. So let me go back and uh, end with some standard slides. What I'm going to do now is uh, use the image HTML tag to display the slides now. So I'm going to continue where I stopped. So the, it's pretty easy to install it. You do easy install, and you do a setup. And you start up a server. The server, unfortunately, runs only on um, Unix, Mac, Linux kind of thing. But the client should run on Windows as well. And it actually runs on iPad and Android, too. So this is architecture of Grafton that there's a server, and any number of browsers can connect to it, and any number of hosts can also connect to it. They, they both connect to this, so everything is coming into the server. So you can have multiple machines connect to the server, and you can create terminals and all of them. So the pros and cons, it's backward compatible with Xterm. It's agnostic, programming language agnostic. It actually works across SSH boundaries because you can transmit the escape sequences. You can do pipes. If you saw, you saw that I was piping my HTML to display inline. And you can do on-demand notebook mode and go back to terminal mode anytime. And the client only work, the client works on Windows, but not the server. You could do Sigwin or PowerShell, perhaps. A prompt par parsing actually works very well for Bash, but it's more fragile for other programs. And the text-based APIs will never be as powerful as sort of a native programming language APIs. Um, I want to keep it compatible with IPython. It can read and write IPython notebooks. It uses the same keyboard shortcuts. And I can also leverage the rich display protocol to do visualization, because it, wrapper HTML generates the HTML that I can use. Uh, applications, you can use it for data analysis and visualization. And pretty much all your GUI actions are trans translated to shell commands. So when you click on a file or open a file, it's all recorded for you as a history. You can do screen sharing, which didn't work, but it should. Uh, you can create a virtual computer lab. So what I have here is a lab running on an Amazon cloud. And you can monitor multiple screens si screen simultaneously. And you can get instant feedback. And actually, this feedback is recorded in a file. So what you type in the feedback is recorded in a file. So you can do reproducible research. You can record the GUI actions. You have the notebook mode. And you can actually use it as a replacement for screen or Tmux, because um, when you leave, the, the session is still live on the server. You can just go back to your home computer and log in. You can still access it. It's all stored on the server. So the end. And I'm going to run one more command, and then we'll stop. So graph term, I mean, a graph term can be embedded in itself, because you can have iframes that run other graph terms, and it can actually embed graph term, the same graph term within itself. It has a built-in recursion check. Um, so you, I, I won't do it now, but you can actually, it's like looking at a mirror and looking between two mirrors. But here they're running six graph terms within a graph term. And so here I'm checking the news, uh, sorry, the weather for Austin. And that's the uh, slideshow running there. This is the a markdown cell in the cell notebook that you saw. And you can have matplotlib inline, and this is D3. So you can 
embed terminals within is like the matplotlib subplot command. So you can actually embed terminals within terminals. And these, these are not uh, thumbnails, they're actually actual terminals. You can go in and type stuff in them. So if I go in here. So I can go in and edit stuff and run stuff in them. So I'm going to quit, see if I can quit this presentation. Okay, I'll stop here and take questions. Uh, basically, it's prompt detection. Uh, yeah, uh, is there a Unix shell under the hood, or could you replace it with something else? Uh, Bash is not built into it, but it uses the Bash option called prompt command to detect prompts. It puts a random string, and that's why it, it's very reliable. So if you can reliably detect prompts, you can put in any program. It doesn't use pexpec because it does full screen prompt detection. So pexpec only does line at a mode. You can actually run VI in this. You can run Emacs in this. It does the full screen. It's Ajax term code, which is extended. Fail to open website. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll try it out with my students next time, and then we'll. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.